Well, greetings, Blade fans, and welcome back to the Automatic Knife Show today. We have six Benchmade automatics, all made in the U.S., all made by Benchmade, and some more recent and some a good deal older. So we can kind of do this chronologically, and notice that they're both out the side and out the front autos. So we're going to start with the Bedlam. This is a knife no longer made, once again, to the best of my knowledge. Correct me if I'm wrong. And this is the automatic version. This is known as the, besides Bedlam, let's see if it's got a number that I wrote down here. Oh boy, here we go again. Looking at the notes. Somebody will give me the a number on it, but I'm just going to call it the Bedlam. <laughs> it is from 154 CM. I got this uh, through an online forum from a guy who put a very decent mirror edge on this one. And I would imagine that was kind of tough to do given the fairly steep grind. This one is not known for its fine edge, but it's an amazing Persian-styled blade with a humongous handle. Got about two inches left over there. And a steel, yep, steel frame and steel glass breaker slash skull crusher. The clip is deep carry only because it is a looped over clip, but you still got an inch sticking out of the pocket. They just had no other place to put it. Looks like that wasn't going to do it. We've got heavily sculpted 3D milled G10 handle scales, and it's an axis lock with a safety. And I find that a pretty convenient safety as safeties go on automatic knives. You may or may not like safeties on automatic knives, but it's easy with your thumb holding it in the position right out of your pocket to engage and disengage that lock. So if you're in a rough situation where that might accidentally get actuated, you might want to use it. If you don't want to use it, it really doesn't look like it's going to accidentally go on. So being an automatic axis, you pull back on the axis lock, it releases the spring, and there you go. This one has no lock rock, no blade play. Very, very nice. It is a large and heavy knife. On any of these on the table, if you wish to know more, I have independent reviews, I should say individual reviews, up on each one. This one comes through partially serrated as well. Always handy if you're using this in the field for utility to cut strapping, cut rope, anything that your edge might slide off of that is a tougher material. Generally plastics um, are tough materials to cut. so. When you got the serrations, it's a good way to go. Again, 154 cm steel and about a four inch blade on this guy. Yeah, just shy of four inches. It's a big knife. And if you're interested in one, uh, you might luck out and find one on the secondary market. Okay, also an older model. This is the Casbah. And the Casbah is S30V, I believe, yep. Really nice um, satin finish on this one. See if I can show you that. Again, we have a safety, which locks it open and locks it closed. This one's got a blue handle, although this does come in a black handle as well. And there's another model that escapes me, but it's very similar but they use G10 for the handles. You know, a little bit, a little bump up from this one. I think you can get these pretty reasonably at like 175 bucks in that range. 
I'll see if I can put links to these um, out to various uh, merchandisers, various uh, web pages in case you're interested. I know that White Mountain does have an automatic knife section, so you can certainly check it out there. The clip is reversible, it is deep carry, almost disappears most of the handle in your pocket. Uh, it's a grivery or um, FRN style handle, but with a, a milled in pattern that is very, very grippy. It's a comfortable knife. The handle is, I would say, just right sized, and we got about a 3.4 inch blade on this one. Again, S30V, and kind of a drop point, spear point affair with a swedge on the top that is unsharpened. Comes through, however, very sharp. As far as utility goes, this is probably one of the best utility blades on the table in a small, very lightweight package. Action is quick, although it'll give you a little shudder in your hand. It's not going to completely fall out of your hand. Moving along, this one I picked up uh, about a year and a half, two years ago. This is the Mediator, a fairly new, smaller, lightweight design. It's right in there with the size of the... Casba. Let's see. Yeah, right in there with the Casba. The Casba is a little taller in profile. And this is a little narrower top to bottom. Also, there's your safety. Like it or not, it's on the knife. And this one is with the part serrations. Again, you may or may not like that. My feeling is. The reason why people don't like these is it sort of disrupts the flow of the the line of the the grind, and I get that. You know, it's kind of a kind of an awkward looking thing, but hey, very useful. And this one's got a clip point that provides you with lots of strength. We can get that in focus. Yeah, lots of strength right out to the tip. It is a G10 handle on this one. Very thin profile, or very thin side to side. And reasonably strong spring. You know, I'd say the Casba is probably just a little snappier, but this is quick. It's a very light blade. And they went S90V on this one. So uh, there we've got a uh, top end steel from Benchmade, who usually likes 154CM and S30V, <laughs> and has recently gone to some other steels. But probably the lightest, and um, I'd say the handiest on the table, short deep carry clip that just about disappears it. It is transferable, side to side, rides on top of the handle. Nice texturing, although it's not that grippy, not as grippy nearly as the FRN handle on the Casba. But a very neat, small, discreet auto from Benchmade. So that's three out of six. Now we're going to get into the newer ones. And um, although this certainly isn't a brand new knife by any means, this is the Autocrat and out the front knife. This one's also an S30V, which surprised me for a newer knife that they stuck with S30V, but might have something to do with the way that uh, S30V holds up in thinner profiles. And this is, you know, only like two and a half millimeters or so in blade stock. And interestingly, it is a, um, what you call a, a zero degree grind on one side and a bevel on the other side, you know, almost along the lines of a chisel grind, but not really, because both sides of the blade are fully ground into a dagger style with a fuller down the middle. I like the fact that they went with G10 for the handles on this. I've got a number of aluminum handled um, out the front knives, including Microtech, of course. Um, 
you know, when I did the single review on this, which is still posted on the channel here, uh, some people said, you know, this has gotten a bad rap because uh, some people are panning it because uh, maybe they had some failures to uh, have that knife open and close. I haven't had one. And some people have actually put this through some pretty hard use, you know, cutting wire, stripping wire, some linesmen and so forth. One guy said his son was a linesman that was uh, using this in everyday hard use. So, you know, that's, uh, that's a good testimony as far as I'm concerned. We've got an aluminum frame underneath the uh, G10 handle slabs. Uh, deep carry for sure disappear that right out of the right down in the pocket this one is desert tan comes in a black and comes in a uh, olive drab I believe bench made pretty brightly branded on the the blackened uh, blade but very positive very snappy and it's a long throw but not it's not a thumb breaker like some good size handle lots of room on the handle almost a four inch blade I think we're talking like uh, yeah about three and three quarters on the blade comes through absolutely biting razor sharp with that way that they have ground that blade might be a little difficult to resharpen but um, this one doesn't see too much carry because in my state I am not supposed to carry it although you know sometimes you just carry things because you want to and you behave yourself and uh, you get through unscathed <laughs> a little more recent I think this was a late 2021 introduction is the Claymore Claymore named after an anti-personnel mine from the Vietnam era this one they decided to go with CPMD2, which is an extremely fine-grained powder metallurgy D2, not your average D2. So holds an edge, still has the toughness of D2. And you can look it up, knife steel compositions, highly recommended. Locking button, and this one is fast. <laughs> probably one of the fastest out the side autos because it is light the blades fairly light um, I think the stock on this is about uh, a little over three millimeters somewhere in there again look up my review if you have extra interest in any one of these uh, this comes also in both a tan and a or I think it was this came in a black and a tan uh, this is like a desert tan uh, Desert tan? No, sorry. This is the OD green. So OD green and black this comes in as far as I know. And it's a Zytel glass reinforced nylon molded handle. Deep carry clip for sure. Folded over clip. Will go on both sides. Got a lanyard hole. And with this one, they also, yeah, I already mentioned that. Blech. CPMD2. <laughs> There's your Benchmade Butterfly, and there's your Steel. Very nice kind of um, rough textured coating on this. Um, don't have that written down anywhere, but almost like a, uh, almost like the finish that you see on some of the Topps knives. And certainly that will protect the blade uh, until it eventually wears off and all finishes wear off let's be honest but you know put a little oil on there this is a pretty nice high grind this is meant to be a tactical knife I did not get the serrated version not sure they make one they might or they might not but that's the claymore yeah, yeah we'll put it that way what the heck finally latest and greatest from 2022 we've got the shootout and this handle is made out of their um, what's the handle material now it is a 
tell you in a minute. It's CF Elite. Should have known that. It's a carbon fiber and um, plastic, I think, like FRN maybe, mixture. But it's all reinforced with carbon fiber. You pick it up and you say, oh, this is like just plastic toy. I mean, that's going to be the feeling you get from these ultra lightweight materials. But they did put a, I think it's aluminum, yeah, an aluminum um, reinforced glass breaker with a carbide glass breaker tip on the end. Whether or not you need that, well, you got it. This was designed for law enforcement and uh, EMTs, first responders. Anybody that need a quick knife to cut something, to defend themselves, or to uh, get somebody else out of trouble, you know. And it is a, the blade on this one, they also went with, uh, wow, no, that's CPM. CPM crew wear, yes. So they upped the game with this one. Crew wear still a rustable steel. Uh, very tough and very hard. Um, this comes through with an excellent biting edge, by the way. I mean, I like edges that have those micro serrations. It's a nicely done edge in kind of a um, kind of a tonto with a little bit of a swedge at the top. Not a particularly long blade. It's a good medium sized blade. Comes in at three and a half inches. Plenty of handle and fires very nicely. Longer throw, a little harder at the very end with that spring than the Autocrat. Nice and thin handle, ergonomic, very grippy. And what they did up here was put this incredible grippy stuff that they milled in. Uh, this is grippy, fairly, that they molded in there, but this is like sandpaper, basically. It's as if you put some friction tape on there. That's how grippy that is on both sides. So, you know, if you're holding it up here, it's not going to slip. If you're holding it this way to cut, it's not going to slip. And uh, very neutral handle. You can hold it any direction you want, point up, point down. That's the shootout. So there you have it. Bedlam, Kasba, Mediator, Shootout, Claymore, and the Autocrat. Giving the old brain a workout this morning. Okay, well, hope you enjoyed this review of my Benchmade Auto Collection. This is all six of them. Maybe some more coming down the way. You never know. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe, as I said. And we'll continue to say, catch you soon.